Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got Dana and David on today. How are you folks? We are doing great. It's good to be with you. Yes, yes sir. So, having, Brad. so what time is it where you are right now? We're in central time, just like oh, you. Oh, good. So right down, right down 35W, kind of. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. Just continue about another 20 hours after you hit the Mexico border. <laughs> okay, and you're in Mexico. You're in where? We are in Jalisco, and um, in particular, we're about 30 minutes south of Guadalajara, about four and a half hours from the coast. We're up in the mountains. On a beautiful okay. lake. So the lake is in the mountains, so it's way up there, and it's kind of like, uh, what's that, um, the Tahoe? Oh, yeah. We're, uh, yeah, uh, in altitude, we're about the same as Denver. Mile high. <laughs> Mile high, yep. Mm -hmm. Just How long have you been down there? Uh, coming up on four years. Yeah. Okay, so you got your sea legs, so to speak, or your mountain legs? There you go. <laughs> we are, we're altitude ready. So you married and got kids? Are you single and wild and crazy? Or what's uh, the situation there? We've got four kids. Uh, and we're married. And we're married, okay. yes. Uh, one's in Pennsylvania, one's in Minnesota, one's in Oregon, and one's in Japan. Four different Holy time smokes. zones. I know. Yeah. International. We are. We are, yes. <laughs> So I want to ask, what is it that you guys do? I did a little bit of research on your, your website and things, but I like your domain. It's just like David and Deanna. David and David and Deanna. So it's David and Deanna. Deanna. Yep. I got that screwed up because I had a next door neighbor and um, we called them the five Ds. It was uh, Deanna, Dana, David, and Donna, and uh, Doug. Wow. <laughs> So that's how I remember that, Dana and, and David, because that was two of the, the Smiths. Right. That's great. Right. That's great. So what is it you guys do? We help online marketing solopreneurs to break through to positive cash flow and liberating profit. You know, I'll bet there's a big surge for that right now because people are forced to go online now all of a sudden, right? Exactly. A lot of people that weren't used to working online are doing so now. Yeah, the, the, I know that Zoom stock went up. Everybody starts using oh, Zoom. Oh boy. Yes. So how, how long have you been helping people be entrepreneurs? Well, we started out as entrepreneurs ourselves, blogging and then doing some network marketing and some affiliate marketing. And I think it was about Three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. You know, there was, I can point to the night. Um, our mentor, uh, we were at a, uh, an event together and in training all day and we had him stop by our hotel room afterwards and we went over our business plan and then he said, okay, you guys are ready. You need to be out there coaching. And oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sort of caught me off guard because <laughs> I wasn't feeling ready. Um, but it's like the mama bird. She knows better. She pushes those babies out and they fly and they soar. Yeah. And he knew. We so do, you guys, do you guys think that like, like entrepreneurs are like born or can they be created? And I, I'm assuming you're going to say they'd be created or is there, is there that inherent entrepreneurial spirit that a person needs? There's, there's, both, there's both sides to it, I think. I mean, some people seem to have a natural gift for it, whereas other people um, struggle and struggle and then ha have a breakthrough and, and fly. So um, I think it works both ways. Now, in our case, um, I had been a pastor for 35 years. And... Um, got to be where my my uh, the peak of my career so to speak I was in a, a huge church and I was in charge of strategic planning and coaching staff members perfect and and um, 
transferable. What I what I didn't realize at first was when um, when Todd was telling us, you know, we needed to be out there coaching, is that I had essentially taken those same skills that I'd used my whole career and then applied them to a new niche. Uh, that is to the online marketing niche. And now, uh, now I can help other people with the strategy and coaching them. So I've been self-employed pretty much all my life. When I was a little kid, a friend of my brother's made a quarter disappear and pulled it out of my ear and it got me interested in magic. So that's what the magic Brad name comes from. But I, sure. I kind of went right into into sort of being self-employed as uh, doing magic shows. And I've kind of always been entrepreneurial where my wife, she was a, a Spanish teacher at the University of Minnesota. So she had that teaching coaching element and that's what she does now. But I myself, I'm not much of a coach or a teacher, but I do have that entrepreneurial thing sort of from childhood. So I was gonna ask Dana, because you're a female and I'm not, not trying to generalize too much, but sometimes they like the security and sometimes the job seems like security. And I think because you're entrepreneurs, you understand that there really isn't security in jobs as a lot of people found out when this COVID thing came along. So right. Dana, do you see, do you see the, that kind of thing in the, in the female um, genre, if you will, of uh, entrepreneurism? Well, you know, it seems like a lot of entrepreneurs are women as well. There's a majority. There's so, been a big surge, yeah. Yeah. But I think just in general, as a society, we were taught when we were little kids, you, you graduate from high school, you go to college, you get a job, you work that job. We watched our parents watch, work the same jobs for their whole lives and then retire. And if that's what we've seen modeled before us, that's what we think we're supposed to do. Right. And yes, there is security in having a paycheck, definitely, when you're able to work. Uh, but when, when things like this happen and businesses close, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's insecure. And I think I'm kind of a creative person. So I don't see myself, I mean, I love creating my own schedule and doing my own thing and helping people in all sorts of different ways. I did like a job because I knew what I was supposed to do, when I was supposed to do it. And that's only because I have a time thing. I love time. It's my love language. Mm -hmm. But from a security standpoint, if we can make our own money and find our own way, you know, of using our own gifts and talents and, you know, monetize those, that's what I feel like we both do a really good job of helping people find that inside that gold mine. And of course, in our case, we started it when we retired. Right. So we did have a pension coming in, enough to cover all our basic needs, not the extra things we wanted to do. Yeah, but, but, I, but I think what a lot of people don't realize when they have that nine to five job is you are limited by how many hours you can work because there's only 24 hours in a day and you're limited by whatever your boss will pay you. And I, I say that like your boss yeah. is basically buying your knowledge and wisdom and experience at wholesale and reselling it at retail. So exactly. You're trying to be, and it's, it's, it's not scalable, whereas self-employment, especially the online world, as you know, is you can almost put a lot of things on automation, and then it's just a matter of pouring gas on the fire to get it going. And uh, so I just I had a yeah. train, like, lost a train of thought because when I graduated high school, they told me, go get a job. And I did get a job with the county parks I worked about three years, I got laid off, and I thought, where's my gold watch? So I learned early that I wanted to do my own thing. Oh, I know what I was gonna bring up, the concept of coaching. I just recently hired a guy because I've been working on some stuff and for some reason it isn't going. What a lot of people don't realize the benefit of having a coach is they can listen to what you're saying and they can give you a whole nother perspective of it. They can get you outside of the box, so to speak. Right. That's a little tooting your guy's horn for being able to shed some light on something where someone says, well, I can't do that. Exactly. And then, and then when you say, oh, I guess what I ought to do is such and such. And you, and now you know that next week or whenever you meet next, they're going to ask, okay, did you get that done? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. They yeah. come up with excuses and things like that. It was really their fear for not going forward and doing it. Say you're supposed to make 10 phone calls. You, that phone gets real heavy when, you, when you're scared. It does. It does. So you kind yep. of encourage them and they sort of feel some accountability. And once they, you encourage them to make that first call, then the second, third, and fourth isn't so hard anymore. Right. And we have a regular process that we lead people through. It's got about 12 steps in it. It starts out with uh, developing a sound foundation for their business by asking the basic questions. And honestly, I find that a lot of people just don't have those foundations in place. They think that they've got a business going, but they haven't figured out who their um, ideal client is, or they yeah. don't know what what is what solution are they offering? Uh, what problem are they solving for people? Um, Especially with uh, your uh, experience in the online world, it's more evident because before the internet, it was about broadcasting. Now it's about narrow casting. Like someone once said to me, I, they they dealt with some skin uh, skin cream stuff. Okay. And, and their target market. I said, "Who's your target market?" And they says, "Well, everybody's got skin." And mm -hmm. thinking that's a lot of people to be calling. You need to niche that down to find the 25 year old um, single mother that does yoga and target that audience. Because then you can keyword it. And I, I know exactly. about all this stuff because this, this is similar to what I do too. But you being able to tell people like that and go, hey, you shouldn't be going for casting that net that wide because it's going to take forever to get through those people. So niche it yeah. down. Or I, I ask people, well, how do you make money? And somebody says, well, I sell this widget. And, um, and how much do you make for each sale? $5. Okay, great. How many sales do you need to make each month to make the, the income that you're planning on? And this particular person I was coaching said, well, that's impossible. And I said, well, it sounds like you've discovered one business plan that doesn't work. Now let's try to find one that does. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good, another good reason for a coach because sometimes people get into that emotional thing like, God, if I could sell a bunch of these, it's really easy because I could just do an email blast out and I've got a big this email list and everybody will buy something and then I'll, I'll make a whole bunch of money and then they find out that it doesn't really work that way and you need someone like you to kind of shed the light on something like that and give, get them back down to reality, I guess. Right, right. <laughs> Well, and then we, then we go on to make sure that they've got each piece in place in their business that, that moves people from, you know, from first being a lead to uh, building up their authority to uh, showing them what you can do for them and, and getting to the, them to the place that they're really hot and ready to, ready to buy and then have some way of inviting them to actually to do do that to, to make that decision to buy uh, it's amazing how many people don't really haven't really thought about how's that going to happen they thought it just sort of was automatic and well, how, did, how did you guys meet how did we meet that's a good question you, you can, can take, take that, that one. one well we met at church <laughs> he was pastoring the church that i grew up in okay. and my first marriage did not go very well. I, it was a bad story and that's a whole nother day, a whole nother. Yeah. But my first Sunday, I took the kids and we show up at church and there he is playing guitar up front, leading the praise band. And I'm like, oh, who's that guy? <laughs> so I had my eye on him from day one and we just interacted through different church functions and it got to a point where, you know, there were some sparks flying and he went to the senior pastor at that time and said, you know, I, I, what do you think about me dating somebody in the congregation? And this is before he even talks to me. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and the pastor's like, no, no, you can't do that. Um, but then he asked, well, who are you thinking about? And he heard it was me. And, oh, well, she's an exception because the <laughs> pastor had known me since I was a kid. He thought I was amazing. He knew what I'd been through. And if, if he was going to make an exception, that was who That was who it would be. How, and, how, long, how long of time period was that before you when you first saw him to when you started seeing Sparks? Oh, 
I think you were right I, away. I was right away. But I didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't I mean, know That it. must have took some time. before You must have went out a couple times, and then, and then, and then you decided, hey, we could be an item. Well, we didn't even date until he got the okay from the pastor. So that went several months though, of us just seeing each other at church. I joined the praise band, you know, to be a little closer. <laughs> and I had actually known your dad for a couple of years yeah. before we met. <laughs> He's so. a great guy, I really enjoy him. <laughs> the reason I ask that is because I use that, that relationship analogy because a lot of people, when they're trying to sell something, they think, I got a great product, you should buy it. And they forget about that whole relationship thing that it takes time. When the, when the farmer plants the seed, it takes time for the corn to come out and grow. Exactly, exactly. That's a great analogy. Uh, you don't ask someone to marry them the first day you meet them. And you, know, you don't ask somebody to buy uh, probably a, a high ticket thing, at least, uh, the first time you talk. Exactly. I, I try and keep things really simple. Like it's basically plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. It's as simple as that. But it yeah. takes a long time for that plant to be nurtured in that relationship. And it's really, it's uh, especially in the network marketing world, it's all about relationships. You can't just say, hey, join my pyramid scam. Because then they go, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. You got to figure out, oh, I understand. I take some time. How many people each day approach me like that? And I'm like, is this working for you? <laughs> Especially on the online world. It's amazing. Yeah. They get connected with you and, hey, check out my link. It's like, right. that doesn't work in the dating world, I don't think. No, That's, no, it doesn't work online either. Not to the people you want to be actually working with. So you know, you, guys, you might snag some desperate people that way. But they are desperate have some actual like programs that you get people. You mentioned the 12 steps. You have like a 12 step program. It's almost like an AA thing or something. It, like almost, does, it almost does, and, which, is, which is interesting in itself. But um, we, we have a course um, that will be released in a couple months. Um, we have a, a group coaching um, uh, well, a coaching group that we uh, work with uh, uh, people together, and then we do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Those are those are primary, primarily the three things we do: the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the uh, group coaching, or courses. Okay. And obviously, one-on-one uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching is a whole lot more focused and uh, helps people move a lot faster, but costs more. Yep, and and the group coaching is, is a lot cheaper, but not nearly as effective, but it works for some people that are sort of in that middle to, tier. And then there's some that just want to say, uh, tell, me the, tell me what I need to know and let me run with it. And they take a course. And they take a course. Well, I'm uh, in the process right now of going through a thing of, uh, you know, Ty Lopez. You heard that name, I'm assuming? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing course. one of his courses right now. And then... Uh, on another side, I, I run, you know, you know, even if we've been doing this stuff for a long time, you run into that block. It's almost like writer's block. It's marketer's block. And I've had sure. that for a while. I can't figure out what am I doing wrong? So I hired a guy mm -hmm. that, that I knew and it's the one-on-one -on -one coaching for it. So there's the, I totally get it. The idea of group classes and courses, do it yourself kind of thing. And then the one-on-one, -on -one, tell me what the heck am I doing? Right. Well, Right. Tell me this, how do we, so if someone listens to this and they go, you know what, I think I want to work with these guys. They're right in line with what I'm doing. How do they get a hold of you? You got a, I'm assuming you got a website. I think it's. Yes, Dana. we do. It's David, David the letter N, Dana.com. David N, Dana.com. And they can go there. Or if they want a, uh, a picture of, how we suggest that you uh, draw people into your business and a sort of a snapshot of our coaching business, they can go to davidndana.com slash solution and they'll get a, uh, a free PDF and a video, some video instruction from us. That's, uh, that's probably a pretty powerful thing too because you mentioned that if, if it more, you just mentioned kind of like the attraction marketing kind of thing. And I right. think these days with all the information that's out there, people don't really want to have you push information on them. They just want to find their own thing. So I think if you can teach people how to 
be an attraction marketer like a magnet, people come to you as opposed to you chasing people down because they run. That is definitely that is our approach. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, I'm psychotic. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> you sniffed it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, this isn't my first rodeo either. I've been doing this stuff for a while. Yes. Well, is there anything else you want to share? Maybe a little nugget or something before I seal this up and pop it out to the universe? Well, one of the things that I often suggest to people is, um, well, 20 years ago, I took a year off from my from ministry to take uh, to study guitar out in Hollywood, oh. and had uh, you know an amazing year. Thought I was going to uh, keep that up and uh, studied jazz improv the rest of my life and get really good. Uh, but as life went on, I was too busy with my, my job and family and just didn't do it. Got to the place where it wasn't even fun to pick up the guitar because my, my you know, skills had, had slipped so much. And then I heard about an online course that sounded like exactly what I needed, led by a, a, a really good professional guitarist. Um, and I thought, well, you know, but I can do this my own. I've had enough lessons. I, I, I've got the stuff up in my head. I, all I need to do is to get it into my ears and my heart and my fingers. Well, a year went by and did I make any progress? No. <laughs> I saw that ad for the course again and this time I took it and I was amazed how much I pr progressed in the next couple months and things got really fun again and i thought you know if people would just see what they need and grab it and do it um you well, know another it, i was gonna say another shout out for you folks i'm assuming that uh, you've got your pricing and stuff it's like a set price is the nice thing about hiring a coach is you pay the price but the information that you learn is scalable you can yes. do amazing things with it so your investment, like, like when you plant a seed, an apple seed, it grows a lot of apples and every apple, there's other seeds in it. So it can really, really blossom out when you invest in a coach or a course, or well, I can see how you could end up uh, getting your spirit back for playing guitar. Yes. Definitely, yes. definitely. And when you can tap into someone else's brilliance, you know, not that every coach is brilliant, but that every coach has, has experience. But when you can tap into that, pay a fee, you're taking advantage of the thousands and thousands of dollars they've spent. You know, when I look at how much we spent to try to do it ourselves. Oh yeah, we've already, we've taken over a hundred thousand dollars worth of courses and events and, and different and things coaches. over the years. Yep. And so we try to, you know, package that and, and provide exactly what people need when they need it. Yep. You sort of blaze the trail already, you know, you know, to that's go right. through and yeah. stop that's your way right. through we'll the jungle. We'll show you how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Dana is an amazing encourager. Um, and I think one of the pieces of that is starting out every day with gratitude. Yep. That's a, and going and ending the day, you know, two things, two to three things each morning before I get out of bed. What am I grateful for? And before bed, what am I grateful for? It just puts you in the best place possible. Be grateful. It does. Be grateful. And, and then the God, Spirit, Universe appreciates you being gracious and delivers. <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, David and Dana, I appreciate you taking the time. And if down the road there's uh, something else you want to do, you know how to get a hold of mysynergycafe.com. We can do it again. I enjoy doing these things and meeting new people from all over the world. So I'm going to sign great. This up and beam it up to the universe. So appreciate right. you guys taking the time. Thanks, Brad. Thank you so much. Take care. Peace.